water, no electricity, every day, the jet making the bomb. Netanyahu is a big mother The whole region is on edge, waiting to see if Iran and Lebanon's Hezbollah retaliate for the twin assassinations in Tehran and Beirut, which they blame Israel for. But the Lebanese authorities and civilians are already anticipating the worst case scenario. So how is Lebanon preparing for all out war? The country's health authorities have been preparing the nation's hospitals for months, identifying key centers which could act as receiving stations in the case of potentially mass casualties. Part of what we are doing uh, during the tour from yesterday and today is to make sure that first our hospitals are ready to receive uh, uh, patients or casualties and also that uh, there are plans enacted in these different regions if uh, there is a large number of internally displaced uh, population. The hospitals have all drawn up their own emergency plans. The administrator of the Masboud government hospital has been working on disaster preparations for the past month, but he believes the hospital could only hold out for maximum two to three weeks if they had to take in mass casualties. And they're also factoring that the hospital itself could get attacked. The main plan that we evacuate the hospital in case when we, when we have the, the crisis, we will evacuate the whole hospital. All the staff are ready and all the uh, physicians are available. Because uh, the Israel uh, people, they do, not, uh, they do not know hospital from another uh, or schools, whatever, everything they attack. So they don't have any, uh, anything different than any, any place can be uh, attacked by this uh, Israeli people. So you're preparing to evacuate in that event? Yes. Yes. There's been extra training for doctors and nurses to ensure they know how to treat a range of war injuries which they may not have had widespread experience of beforehand. Injuries like bullet wounds, traumatic amputations and catastrophic bleeding caused by bomb blasts and shrapnel. This unit can look after 10 premature babies or those who are very young and ill, but usually in any emergency or warlike situation, you see a spike in the number of babies who are born early. So they're planning and preparing to take in many more should the situation become a lot worse. They brought in extra medicines to deal with the expected emergency which could be caused, with stocks which could last up to four months. Uh, we have purchased uh, approximately about uh, three to four months of medications, about antibiotics, anti-inflammatory, Yes, from one month ago, I, 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 I start to prepare. Residents and shops are stockpiling water and if able are also storing extra food supplies. This supplier has seen his water sales go up by 10%. Those who can have fled Beirut, fearing any war will affect the capital. The roads are noticeably less busy, with many retreating to the mountains which they view as safer. The capital's already been hit, most recently a few weeks ago, after Israel bombed a Hezbollah commander they blame for a rocket strike which killed 12 children playing football in the occupied Golan Heights. That's raised fears the capital could be targeted again. Several embassies have warned their citizens to leave Lebanon, and some airlines have cancelled or restricted flights into the country. But after multiple crises already, including COVID, an economic collapse, and a devastating explosion at Beirut port four years ago, Lebanon can ill afford a full-on war. The country also has the world's highest per capita number of refugees, with thousands of Palestinians and Syrians who've already fled war. <laughs> The poorest are among the most worried, with most living from day to day, unable to flee or store extra supplies. The 
Whatever happens, Iran and Hezbollah have vowed revenge, and most here believe that that retaliation will come. And that, in turn, will prompt more Israeli strikes, with most here fearing that the cycle just looks set to continue.